You've reached Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? Tonight on Monster 911, we've got another excellent podcast for you, formerly only available to our patron subscribers. During this show, you'll hear about encounters with the Boogers, a.k.a. Bigfoot, of Arkansas and what two eyewitnesses saw one night while carp fishing. They told me, and I quote, I've never seen any creature like this, Lance, end quote. Afterwards, we've got the bizarre yet mysterious encounter that some campers had one evening while sitting by the fire one night within a state park. And the bizarre statement the park attendant said when they mentioned what had happened. And remember, if you've seen something and or experienced something that was unexplainable, something that terrified you, it's good medicine to share. I understand that you may be concerned of ridicule or embarrassment, just like I was. But listen, there's no judgment here. I've had my own experiences that was very frightening. So you're in good company with me. And no, you're not crazy. Your call will be 100% confidential. So call me 24-7, anytime, at 1-866-306-8085 or contact me through our website at wwwmonster 911 Dot com. Are you a hunter, an outdoorsman, and all the above? Well, I, I used to be. Okay. I used to be till I found them stinking boogers in the woods. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, please used, go out ahead. I used, well, I'll just tell you the recent one that made me stop. All right. And I'll digress from there. Okay. Where's my phone going uh, well, uh, here a few months, well, last year, really, that we had a big flood over there in Wayne County, over there where I'm from, over around Waynesboro. Yes, sir. And me and my daughter in there, we was in there fixing supper. My wife, she's in the back of the house. I'm up the front of the house with my daughter helping her. And it's, it's been raining for four days straight. I mean, it's flooded. There's water up in my yard because we have a creek creek down there. We have a river over in front of the house. Well, we start hearing trees fall just right beside the house. The creek is right beside the house. It's split. Oh, and the trees just start falling for no reason. The wind's not blowing, nothing. They're falling. So my daughter says, Daddy, what is that? I said, well, hold on, baby. Let's go outside and see. So I pick up my twenty two pistol because I don't go outside without a gun because there's coyotes and stuff around the house. Well, I go outside. Another tree falls as I'm walking around the corner of the house. And I'm going, what the heck is that? So I walk on down towards the creek. I hear something wading in the water like a grown man, a very big grown man, Waiting in the water. So, I'm standing there, and I said, I don't know what the crap that is, so I put two rounds down through the trees. It sounds just like a damn elephant running through the woods. I'm talking about picked up and got gone from there. I ain't seen nothing, because wow. it's just right in the edge of the woods. Okay. But whatever it was hit that water and it did not stop till it got to the other side. All right, okay. roll on a few months later. I'm out, I get a, I I don't sleep much at all because I'm always I hurt too bad and I wake up a lot. Well, I got up and my two little chihuahuas wanted to go outside, so I took them outside. We're out there. We walk out there on the nightlight. And it's four o'clock, and the coyotes are cutting up up one holler from the house. There's a coyote down up there. They're just cutting up, just a cutting up, cutting up, cutting up. And then all of a sudden over here to the right, behind my neighbor's house over there, I hear the loudest, biggest roar you ever hear in your life. I mean, it is so loud 
it's vibrating my chest. You know, you used to go to a concert when you was young, and you get around that bass, it would shake your chest, the fluid around your heart. Yes, yes. That's how loud. It sounded like a train horn. It was so loud. Wow. And I'm standing there with my mouth wide open. Lived in, lived here all of my life. Never, ever, ever heard nothing like that before. Never. Wow. Hunted in there, all back in there, where this is at. And my dogs are usually attack and just go out there and bark. No. They were under my feet with their tails tucked, saying, Daddy, we are ready to go in the house. The coyotes shut up just like that. All right. We roll on from there. My neighbors over across the road, they hear something storming through the bushes over at their house, and their house gets slapped all the time. Something's hit their house. They have big yard dogs, but they stay in the house because the dogs are too scared to go out at night. Now, to top all this off, to give you a reason why, I think there's boogers over there. Over there across the road is a place called, and it's a when I was a kid, we used to dove hunt, deer hunt, and all that over there. Mm-hmm. There's a place over called It's a cave system. Big caves, not little caves. Big caves you can go off in. I wouldn't go over there now if you paid me money. Hmm, wow. There's nothing but... See, see, I farmed all this back there when I was a kid. Never seen nothing. My whole life growing up. Girls, these things have moved in here in the last few years. Sounds like Now, my uncle, years ago, I'm going to back up about, this is probably back when I was like two years old. He was married to my Aunt Pat. Well, they lived in a house beside where my mom and daddy wound up putting a house. Just a little house. They had high schoolhouse windows, if you know what I'm talking about. I do. I remember really, those. Really high school? Yes, sir. Well, they said, they said a panther come up and scream in the window. Now, I can't get him to tell me what he saw. He won't talk about it. My Aunt Pat threw the damn flashlight down and went back in the house because he was trying to shoot whatever it was. He told everybody it was a panther. Panthers don't come up to your window and scream in your window, but a female booger might. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would agree. Now, my dad, I seen panthers when I was a kid down there. I know they're in there. I know everybody will tell you there's no panthers down here. The government tells you that because if they ever say there's panthers down here, we ain't going to have no timber industry anymore. Just like if they said if there's boogers, sanction off the whole country is booger country, and we won't be able to cut no timber. But I think there was maybe a few when I was a kid. But now these things have moved in down there where I live about a mile where I did where I grew up from. Mm. Now to give you a little bit more to work with, I'd go out in the morning times or go out at night and I hear these things hoop. I know what a hoop sounds like. I've heard I've heard things on the internet, you know, sounds that they play. Mm-hmm. They go whoop. And it's two different ones. They're trying to hem up these coyotes, I guess, and eat them. Plus there's never any deer around my house anymore. When I put my house, I built my house and put it there. Deer in the yard 24-7 because there's oak trees there and they just eat acres all the time. There's never a deer in my yard anymore. My friend has a shooting house just right below my house and on my land. Interesting. Don't kill any deer anymore. My daddy's baby brother don't kill any more deer down there anymore because there's never any deer out. Not down there. Now, up from, up away from down there, they kill deer. But right in that general area right there, no, there's no deer there. I mean, if they are, they're scooting when they come through there. Now, I seen one booger, one. My wife sent me up to another town that's over there from where we live at early in the morning to her boss's house to drop something off. Well, I went the back way. Well, there's a set of bridges before you get to that town. All right. I went through there, and I did not know what I was looking at till I got over to the town. I said, wait a minute. 
cows are not that tall, and they don't face look. You don't see both eyes facing you, and they're not red. On the left side of the road at the bridge in Buckman, you know what a bridge in Buckman is, right? Right there where the rail's at, and it drops straight off behind the rail. Okay. It's at least is at least eight ten foot drop off right there. What I was looking at was eyeball eyeball me in the window looking at me, and I could see a dark figure. It didn't register with me till I got up to the town. It just I just looked over and then I didn't consciously think about it till I got to that next town. But them red eyes were looking straight at me. And I came back to that bridge in the daylight and I said, There ain't no way in hell there's a cow that tall mm. looking at me over the that bridge rail. And that just blew my mind. Well they you know, there's other stuff when I was growing up as a kid. My dad said, quote, unquote, there was a panther behind the house. Don't go in the woods. Well, I went back down there where my fork was at, and I was playing. Something was in the woods growling at me. It freaked me out. I backed all the way to my house. It was a quarter of a mile. I never turned around. I watched the woods the whole time. Now, I've never seen no booger right at my house, but the neighbors, their house has been slapped. There's never, the only time I ever seen anything or heard anything on my side of the road was when that, the trees were getting pushed down and it was flooded over. I think the thing was trying to push a tree down where it could walk across it and go across the creek. I think that's what he was mm-hmm. trying to do. And when I come out there, I spooked him when I shot. Hmm. Cause yes. you ever heard, you ever heard a man wade through water? Absolutely. I sure have. Many times. That's, that's what that sounded like. Something very big wading through the water. Trying to get because it was just inside. You know what hedge bushes are? The wild hedge bushes. I do. Yes, sir. They just grow wild. Well, they all around the perimeter of our yard. That's what grows wild. It's a hedge bush, uh-huh. and you can't see through them at night. You can hardly see through them in the daytime. Both my yard dogs were killed. One was eaten. I found what was left of him. My older dog. I think she just had a pregnant heart attack when she seen one of them because she just laid down and died. I think. Oh wow. But I don't know what to do. I know Bear. I've heard him. He, him and, uh, what's his name? Kunbo. Kunbo. They're not that far. I think, was it up there at Brookhaven? Not Brookhaven. Like going to Starkville. They're up that way. I think Bear's up that way. I think Kunbo's over there, right over in his Alabama. Yes. They're, they're not, they're not 80 miles from where I live. Wow, you know, that's close. I, I've tried. I've tried to get up with them. I don't know how to. You know, I, I've heard you. I, I've been listening to you the last two weeks, and I just got the courage enough to call you on the phone. Maybe you wouldn't think I was crazy when I called you. Oh no, no, we never think that. Absolutely not. We, we, uh, we well, had, we've had our own encounters. My, so we, uh, by the time yeah, I heard my wife and my daughter don't believe me. They think I'm this. Now my youngest daughter. She was outside in the evening time one evening, and she heard one go, mm-hmm. and I said, that's a booger. I said, coyotes can't, they don't have lips like that to go, who? I yeah. said, they whip her and yell and all that. I said, they don't go, whoop. No. And they don't whistle, and they don't imitate hoot owls and sound like 900-pound hoot owls either. Well, they now, when they when they do hoot owls, it's not going to be sound right. no. It's exactly right. It's not going to be hoo 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 hoo. It's not going to be that nice. Uh-huh. It's going to be hoo uh-huh. hoo hoo hoo. It's going to yeah. be uh It's going to be. It's going to sound like a bad hoot owl call. Yeah, bad imitation of a hoot owl. Bad imitation. Now, last week when I come over here to work, my wife said they got home the other night, and that's what was going on right there at the house. I said I wasn't home. The alpha male was not home. And they were right up at the house, and they said, oh, they ain't done it. They was hoot owls. I said, all right. I know what a 900-pound hoot owl sounds like. I'm not crazy. They think I'm crazy. My youngest daughter don't. She believes, and the neighbors across the road, they've heard more than I've heard. Oh, they're across the road from you. They're that close. Yeah, they just, yeah they're just like maybe 100 yards just right across the road. Oh, that's close. And they said, they said they have heard them in their pure fighting in there and talking to each other. Right in the edge of them hedge bushes. They're fascinated with, well, I guess they're trying to either eat their dogs, which them dogs are out in the daytime all the time. And that 
girl dog they got is so damn skittish you can't even walk up to her. I mean, she she don't like anything that's upright. She spooked all the time. Well, it's there could be a, there could be a number. And I have of nobody to talk to. You know, right? Well, a lot of people don't, I, and that's why they call. A lot of people don't, and even in their own family, I mean. You know, this is where some family members are at the wrong place at the wrong time, or they're just not listening to the woods. Things don't sound mm-hmm. right. And with your neighbors, I mean, it's kind of a given. If something's slapping the side of the house, and... I mean, you know, that ain't happened to mine. It's happened at their house. Yeah. And they wouldn't lie to me, but I just happened to one day just, I just all, they made an off and Because I didn't want to seem like I was nuts or nothing. I just said, uh, y'all ever hear any strange rackets and stuff? And she said, yeah, we have. And then she just started naming off stuff. I said, oh, really? So now we have a full conversation about it now. They know they're there just like I do. And I'm like you. It says right there in Genesis 6, there were giants in the land in the days of Noah. Yes. It's going to be just like it is in the days of Noah, like it is, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah you know, absolutely. they got to come from somewhere. Well, they do, and you know, and I know that gets into you know when you've heard plenty of the shows, a lot of people debate about these things mm-hmm. come out of portals or they were uh, alien DNA and the aliens dropped them mm-hmm. off and everything. I, I honestly don't it's, think it's, it's that complicated. It's not alien. It's just it's just you know fallen angels, like it says in the Bible. That's what I believe. That's that's our belief. Of course, there may not be that belief with a lot of the folks listening, and that's okay. Uh-huh. Everybody's now, entitled I have to their not, own opinion. I have not seen no dog man. Now, that thing that roared, I don't know what the hell that was. It scared me so bad I want to pee on myself. And I'm a grown man. I'm 52 years old. And I have never in my lifetime heard nothing like that. It vibrated my chest. It was so loud. How far do you and think I, that I, was? I waited two days before I said anything to my wife about it. Oh, wow. I mean, it spooked me that bad. I just I went in the house. I got my forty five and my shotgun and laid both of them in my lap because I was that scared. I do not go out in the yard without my forty five or my shotgun. One or the other. I got one in my hand all the time. And last week last week when I was gone and them hoot owls started cutting up around the house, them two got them some guns and started sitting around with had guns in their hands too. They may call me crazy, but I ain't stupid, you know. Oh, absolutely. I don't think you're stupid at all. I mean, uh, how far, and I know this is going to be hard to uh, estimate, but how, when you're out there with your dogs and uh, that early in the morning. And quarter of a mile. Quarter, quarter of a mile. Really? And it's still vibrating. Yeah, they're close. And it still vibrated yeah. the lungs. Well, the, the that booger might have been right over behind that pond, right over on the other side of the neighbors when okay. he roared. It was right over in there somewhere. It wasn't even a quarter of a mile, probably. How far? How long ago was this? It was last year. When it, you know, when all that flooding was in the spring. Most of the activity I get, I get is from now to spring when it cools off. When it's hot, I don't hardly ever hear. Them. Hmm. I mean, Brooke heard that one who, who whatever it did here a while back last month. And the last time I really heard them, I got up one Sunday morning and it was two going at it up the hollers. They'd whoop, one of them would whoop, and the other one would whoop. And they, I've heard them whistle. You know, people are only thing, and boogers are only thing that whistle. Coyotes don't whistle. No. No, and that's one thing, too, that um, a few people that's been uh, in close contact with these things, and I say close contact, I mean they vocalize back, is a couple things they say is you don't ever want to whistle back. Mm-mm. No, and, I don't. I don't whistle. I don't. And, I don't try to talk to them. And, I don't do anything to them. Yeah, because we still know so very little of their language. And the other thing that you don't want to do is you do not want to play habituate them. Y- yeah, you don't want to play a crying baby sound, and nope. and you don't want to. You hit it just now. You don't want to start habituating them because. They, no. they may befriend you and, and, and start, they'll take and it. And when the food runs out, they start taking it out on you. How about yes, that? sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. I We've heard that numerous times. And uh, That's how them people get their houses kicked in, rocks thrown at them, 
That's how all that stuff gets started. Oh, let's fun. Let's feed them. Let's get them to come up to the house. I don't want something that weighs 900 pounds come up to my house that can snatch my arms off and stuff my own head up my rear end. I remember Kumbo talking about the man that folded him, folded backwards and stuck back in his truck. I'm not fooling with him. Yeah. Well, and you know, another thing, too, is yeah. that there apparently, there's a lot of do's and don'ts, but another thing is, is if you're in an area, it sounds like there's a lot of activity um, in the evening or at night. They don't like mm-hmm. a lot of loud noises going on. Well, there ain't much going on around my house. Like generators, tractors, lawnmowers. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't want any of that going on late at night. Uh, for some reason, that is just very agitating to them, mm-hmm. and they will not put up with that. Well, I, I've not had no trouble. No, 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 no hitting on the house, nothing like that. And that kind of creeps me out sometimes. I think they're walking around the house looking in the windows. I've never seen any footprints in the yard. I have put string and tied string all the way around the perimeter yard just to see if it gets broke. I ain't had none of it broke. I don't think they're coming up to my house, but they're coming up to the neighbor's house because they're gone. What has your neighbor done? Have they tried anything creative to no, to? No. Uh, they they're older. He's 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 got heart problems, and she does her best to take care of him. They're older. I know. see. When they they when can't they, really do anything. When your neighbor says they hit on the house. Do you know if she's uh, if, if the hits that they're making on the house is close to their bedroom or is it in other? Parts? I don't. I don't. It's on the back side of the house. And she said they just slap it. Huh. So and they got them big old schoolhouse windows in that house too. It's up off the ground. Yes. Well, you've had a lot of uh, you've had a lot of activity going on for a long well, time. Well, you know that the 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 boy that does is the Sasquatch Chronicles. Yes, sir. I emailed him, and he called me one time, and I never could get back with him. I texted him. I said, hey, please call me. Please talk to me. I need to talk to some. He just quit doing anything with me. I even emailed him a couple more times. I just gave up on him. Wow. You know, I, I didn't, when he called me to talk to me, I didn't have time to talk to him because I was going to church, and I just couldn't talk right then. Right. And I told him, I said, let me get out of church, and I'll call you right back. Yes. He just blew me off after that. Well, I don't know if he was busy or if he just didn't want to talk to me or what it was. Well, who knows? I mean, there's, you know, I know some folks, they get a lot of people calling them, and uh, if if they don't, um, you know, take good notes and uh, get back with folks, it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. You know, I yeah. I really take a lot of notes, and uh, I call everybody because I'm always interested. Well, you're you're a lot closer to me now. I may have to answer my wife's phone call when she calls. Oh, no problem. I may have to call, no. I may have to call you right back. No, I want I want no. to talk to you. Really, I do. Yeah, no problem. She's probably gonna call here right around nine o'clock. Yeah, that's no problem. Your family comes first. I, I I'm with you. Your your wife calls from kids and family come first. So that's that's my, my wife. My wife's family is from Arkansas. Oh, okay. Me and my father-in-law were up there at Fort Chaffee, and we were fishing on the Arkansas. Earlier in the day, we went to a boat ramp up there, and we were scouting out where we was going to fish at night because we didn't have a boat fishing river. We had to fish on the bank. Okay, we went in there and come back out. And I looked over in a, in a little ravine there. There was a cat-like creature. It was about as big as a maybe a hound dog, black. And get this, had red stripes. It didn't, it didn't really look like a cat, and it didn't really look like a dog. It looked like a combination of both. It looked funny. I don't know what it was. And I just kind of just, it just rolled off us, just looked and went on. They didn't think no more about it. All right, we come back fishing that night. Me and him was sitting there, and I kept catching them uh, gars. And then we just take them, throw them up on the bank, because if you don't, they just keep eating your bait. Well, they were up there flopping in the rocks. Well, I was sitting out on a sandbar. My father-in-law was out on the spur dike where it's rocks, and he was sitting out there. I kept hearing something walking up behind us which I'm already booger-sensitive anyways. 
you know, because growing up, where oh, I grew up. Absolutely. And I really didn't see nothing back then. You know, I remember the Patterson film and all. That had me spooked anyway. But I kept hearing something tipping behind me. You know, when something's sneaking, it's tipping. Barely tiptoeing in there. Mm-hmm. And me and him both, about that time, we both had mag flashlights. We turn around and shine. There's that thing standing there. It's black with red stripes on it. Now, is it standing upright or is it on all fours? Uh, no, it was on all fours. It oh, was a cat, okay. cat-like. It had a long, you know, tail. And it was just standing there. It was about as tall as a dog, but it wasn't a dog. And it wasn't a cat. It didn't look like a cat in the face. It, it didn't. It was, it was an in-between thing. That's something that I've never seen before. We went up to the, after the next morning, we went up to uh, over to Fort Chaffee where the wildlife thing is, and we asked them about it, and they just looked at us like we had three heads. <laughs> and I'm going, well, I don't know what it was, and he don't know what it was. We just seen it. It got one of them guards in here. It just it politely turned around and hopped off out of the bushes. Wow. It, it was bigger than a bobcat. You know, I've seen bobcats all my life, and I've seen black panthers, and I've seen cougars. You know, everybody says there ain't no panthers in Mississippi. That's a lot of hogwash. I've seen them. I've seen three, so the, and I've seen a gray one over in Ellisville, Mississippi. So the body was black with red stripes. Whatever it was, it was black and had red, blood red stripes on it. Like, it was weird looking. Like the stripes you would see on a zebra, but uh, like that, down yeah. the sides. Yeah. Did it have it like... Went was on it? his tail, all the way up his backside, up his back, and across his head. Interesting. I have never yeah. heard or seen I anything like either. it. And that I was, uh, how far was that away from where uh, you guys live? In, it was on Fort Chaffee, right there at uh, Fort Smith. Oh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Right this is in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Interesting. I have never heard of that. Me either. <laughs> I what, knew you'd be interested in that. Yeah. What? So, and you were with I, uh, who were you with? My father-in-law. What did your father-in-law say on that? He said, "I can't repeat all what he said because he had a lot of experts <laughs> there to go." <laughs> he said, "What the MF is that?" I said, "I don't know, Wayne." How far were you guys away <laughs> from it? Oh, uh, I was about twenty steps from it, and it was right behind him, maybe ten, fifteen feet. Oh heck! You were we close were, then. We were looking right. I had my had my you know mag flashlight. I had it right on him, and he had his. We had it two beams looking at it. So what else? We what, had, what other details did you see? Like the feet or the ears? It or, had it had you know it had kind of a cat, but it didn't look like a cat. It looked messed up. It looked like it was half of something and half of something else. Okay. It didn't look like a cat, but it didn't look like a dog either. I have no idea what it was. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. And would it be as big as a um, German Shepherd? German Shepherd. I was going to say German Shepherd or full-grown uh, large breed dog. A full-grown large breed dog. It was about the same, but it had a long, you know, that long tail like a panther has. Yes. And it had them red rings down its stinking tail. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And what year was that? Uh, let's see. They were still living in Fort Smith, probably 2006, 2007. Because my mother-in-law, she died in 2008. So, it was probably 2006, so 2007, it, right there. So, it and just, it was, uh, it was in the fall. Oh, it was in the fall. No, it was okay. in the summertime. It was in the summertime. Summer, okay. And it grabbed a carp that you guys had, and it just uh, took off. Yep, just got him, got him a guard, and he took off. That's the last we seen of it. Now, I've Googled and Googled and Googled black cat with red stripes, and nothing comes up. You may have seen it, a new species of something. Or a hybrid or a hybrid breed or something. I wouldn't know what the crossbreed would be to bring <laughs> no about idea. red stripes. That's one reason why I want I want to tell you all that, and I wanted to tell you about that thing I seen up there around you. Because I think if you're in Tulsa, how far is Tulsa from Fort Smith? Oh, 
Um, two, two hours, three hours? I, I would say about two and a half hours. That's about right. It was the same year. You remember when the barge hit the bridge over there on 40? I and do. The bridge down? That was over there by Weber Falls, Oklahoma. Yeah, that's when that's when all that. That's when we seen the cat thing or the black red stripe thing. Oh. That's when we seen it. Whatever that. Well, I think I think it was that year. It may be. I think it was ninety six. Oh. It may. It may have been that same year. <laughs> it was just weird. Fred, you're breaking up just a little bit there. Uh, are you on a speakerphone? No, I got my earbuds in work. I hear you. Okay. I'm hard to hear listening to that equipment all day long. Okay. Well, that's that's fascinating. I, I can't say I've ever heard anyone describe anything like that they saw on a riverbank or any, 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 uh, well, that's that the first for me, too, and him. And when, when I see him, we, we talk about it whenever I see him. And he come in and he tell me, so, Fred, I swear somebody's looking at me at night while I'm sleeping in their camp. He just gets a so feeling. Right there, just gets a right feeling. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what those things are. I know they're there. Yeah. But I didn't, for a long time, I didn't know they was there, there, you know. I just, I was like you. I always thought they was out there in the northwest in the big woods. Well, but and I, know these, that, I know these kind of around down here, you don't know whether they're mean or docile. Well, that's just it. Like, and, you know, Kumbo and Bear talk about this. Uh, yeah. I was at one of their... Uh, Bear was going around with uh, Dan Rickey, and they were yeah. in Lexington, Oklahoma, just giving a talk, an informative talk, meeting folks, and just talking I've about... Listened, I've listened to a lot of them talk about stuff, too. And uh, and basically, they're just saying that sometimes uh, regions, you know, the, some regions uh, have some cantankerous boogers, and, uh, and, and just some have some flat-out uh, aggressive mean... And then other mm-hmm. areas are um, seem to be more dog laid man. back. Yeah, dogmen. And even in the same state, like in southeast Oklahoma, they tend to be a little more um, aggressive, just a little bit. And if you go out to northwest mm-hmm. Oklahoma, and in the uh, Panhandle area, out on the plains, we're not talking mountains mm-hmm. and, and huge streams. We're talking plains of Oklahoma. We're talking about gullies and small washes. Trees in them. I don't know yeah, about. and so they tend to be a little more docile, but still curious, obviously. And then uh, there's central part of Oklahoma where it's a combination. You never know. There's some aggressive ones. And well, here's w- something. Here's something you could use on your show. There's a little bit of truth in every legend. You know, there's as there's legends of giants in every culture all over the world. There's legends of werewolves in every culture all over the world. You know, these things are here. The yes. Indians seen them way before white people ever got here in this country. Oh, yes. And I tell that I tell that to my daughter and my wife. I said, well, I guess all the Indians were crazy, too, because they were seen them before white men got over here. I said, Leif Erickson come over here before Columbus was born and seen them up there in Newfoundland up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, definitely historical records where these things were dating all the way back years and years and years and years ago. Mm-hmm. And so, for whatever reason, I mean, uh, this brings up an interesting point and question. Uh, not too long ago, I can't even recall who I was talking to, one of the guests, and he just said, you know, it seems to me that all of a sudden, within the last few years, there's been just a a, a boom in sightings and in these things all over the place in small townships on the side of the road yep. uh, and I said well yep. I don't know I said it se- it does appear that way it could be a number of things obviously information can go worldwide now on the internet yep. and people for the first time are having these channels yep. where they could come out and tell their story whereas before it's been bottled up for years and years because like in yep. your case there are certain family members that don't believe you because they've never had an experience or never seen or really not paid close yep. attention and uh, some people just go to the grave with it where now people yep. are realizing these channels are out and they're going hey I'm not as crazy yep. as what I thought there's people out there that saw uh-huh. the same darn thing 
So if you don't mind, just kind of tell me uh, what uh, were you say you were with a group of people, which is interesting. Okay, so we were we were up there and we were camping. Um, we had uh, let me see, one, two, three, four campers full of us. Um, just a you know a camping trip. Um, we had camped up there the year or two years before. Um, but it, it was, uh, real hot when we had camped up there and we had, you know, uh, we really didn't stay outside in the evenings a lot. Um, but this time, um, you know, it was cool weather and we had a campfire and, um, it, it was really nice, but there was, um, like I said, there was four campers full, you know, four families of us up there. Um, one camper being my mother and father-in-law. Um, and we were all, we all had sites relatively close to each other. And we were all hanging out, um, at our campsite, uh, most of the time. So you say were these, uh, like formal campsites or did you, it was this primitive encampment? Yeah, it's, it's called the point campground, um, there in the Chickasaw National uh, Recreation Area, and yeah, I mean it, they're they're RV sites, um, full hookups, and all of that. But um, it's very uh, thick in that area, and there's not a lot of trails. Um, you know, the kids brought their bicycles and everything, and there wasn't even any trails for them to really ride there um, because of the the uh, woods are pretty thick right there um and it's kind of an unkept i don't know i don't know how to describe it parks pretty um off the roads and everything it's pretty unkept okay it's like all natural you know the grass was waist high or higher and um there's a lot of little ravines and washouts and uh, that kind of thing right there especially right where we were camping um, our site had like a, the trailer was on, on a pad and then the site dropped about three steps. Um, and then there was another pad that had the fire ring. It was probably 25 by 25 feet and I had a fire ring and I had my, you know, griddle and everything set up and we cooked and hung out out there. And then behind our site, it dropped just a sheer drop, um, oh, down into a gully that was probably a hundred, 150 foot down at the, to the bottom of like a washout Creek down there. Hmm. And, um, my father-in-law and mother-in-law were camped in the next site to us, but you couldn't even see their trailer. And there was a ravine kind of in between our two uh, campsites. Um, and that's kind of how it was set up, you know. Okay. Everything pretty much just dropped off right behind our sides, and the kids didn't go down there. It was, like I said, it was real thick, um, and you know, pretty. Like I said, no trails or anything. The kids stayed on the pads or up, you know, on the roads riding their bicycles and stuff because it was so thick. Sure. But that's pretty much how the how the campsites were, you know. And how how long were you guys there for? We were there um, from, I think me and got down there Thursday night or Friday morning. I can't remember. We were there Friday night, Saturday night, and left Sunday. Me and Joe may have been there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I can't remember now. So, so <laughs> uh, everybody what? else came down Friday throughout the day, you know, they all got there um, and got set up. Friday night, nothing happened, but what happened happened Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind, uh, go into kind of what happened there. <laughs> okay, so what happened was we were all hanging out, you know, uh, we had, had gotten through uh, dinner, and we were, uh, all the grown-ups um, were in a circle, you know, kind of by the fire pit. And 
the my daughter and a couple of the older kids were out, but the younger, all the boys. I coach a baseball team, and, and a lot of the people that were with us were were families. Two of the families that were with us were my baseball boys, and so um, and their families. And so the boys were all in uh, Joe and April's trailer across the street um, from where we were just hanging out playing video games. And it was probably, I would say probably around 11, 10, 30, 11 that evening. Um, we had a little radio going, uh, just lightly playing, um, fire going, and we were just all sitting around talking. And um, the pad where we were uh, sitting the back of the pad, with well, the side to the trailer, like I said, it steps down two, two or three steps to this pad. And then on two sides of it, the back side of it, it drops off about five or six feet. And then from there, it just plummets down into the, into the ravine. Okay. And then um, the other side does the same thing. It, you know, you can, you can jump off the rock wall and land on the ground. And then right behind it was, you know, bushes and trees, and then it just plummeted off, too. There was a couple of real tall trees um, that, you know, if you looked out straight off the pad, um, they were probably 20 or 30 yards away, but you're looking about 30 or 40 foot up the tree. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So the, that's the ravine dropping off, and, the, and it just drops way down, and you – you know, you could during the daytime you could see down in the ravine, but you know, like I said, it was kind of thick. Anyways, so we're sitting there and um, have their back to the back side of the of the uh, pad, like so. Their backs are to the to the woods back there where the ravine drops off, um, and. My chair was there too, but I had gotten up and I was actually going over there uh, messing with my phone um, with my playlist. And the girls were kind of on the other side, my wife, um, Russell's wife, Joe's wife, April, and my mother, mother mother-in-law. My father-in-law had already went to his trailer to bed. Um, And like I said, my daughter and Russell and his daughter was out there. Um. Anyways, so we're just sitting there, you know, talking. I'm probably five or ten feet away from them messing with my phone. And I hear Pam scream out, oh, my God, he just threw that. And we're kind of all kind of shocked that she's, you know, thinking that one of us threw a rock at her. (laughs) The way she's sitting, she's facing I guess she assumed that it was one of them or one of the kids had thrown a rock at her. Well, <clears throat> we didn't really think much of it at first, but she's, you know, as she, as she's sitting there, she's saying, no, my eye really hurts. Like somebody really hit me with a rock. And so we're, we, I walk over there looking and she's got a cut under her eye with a rock at her. I mean, it hit her. Wow. And she's facing the woods, you know, and the ravine. So the rock had to have come from that area. And about 10 seconds later, you hear uh, a dink on one of the chairs, a rock hit one of the chairs. And then you hear, I turned the radio down because we're, you know, she got hit in the eye. We're trying to figure out what's going on. We were thinking at first, maybe, maybe one of the boys had come out and they were throwing rocks, but. Oh, sure, sure. You know, everything's going through our mind. We're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, then all of a sudden, it's dink, poop, ping, poop, ping, per, you know. And then you can hear the rocks clipping the leaves coming from behind. Gets hit in the back, gets hit in the back of the leg. And not lightly, I mean, they get hit hard, you know. And we're just getting pelted. I mean, pelted with rocks. And you, like I said, you could hear them clipping the leaves coming through the trees at us from down in the ravine. 
And so I stand up, I grab my, uh, I have like a, it's like a floodlight, but it's a battery operated floodlight. So it doesn't shoot a beam out. It just lights up a huge area. You know, it's LED, big, huge LED floodlight. And so I walk over to the edge behind them and everybody's kind of standing up, freaking out, you know, and I turn the light on like down into the ravine. Well, when I do, you really can't see anything, but the foliage right in front of you, you know, because it, it just, right. you can't see past the woods and everything, sure, and sure. everything just stops. And it's just dead quiet. You can't hear anything. And that's it, man. It was over. And we're just stunned. Like, there's, you know, you know how it is. You're just trying to go, in your head, you're trying to go through every scenario Joe gets up, goes across the street, checks on the boys. Everybody's there. You know, um, it's just, there's just absolutely no explanation for what just happened. None. Well, there, there, um, there is, but people don't want to elude to that. You're right. I mean, uh, I mean, you did what the first thing that you do, Hey, who's throwing this? Is right. it the kids? Is this a, is this a <laughs> couple teenagers down in the yep. you know down in the well? And, ravine? and the funny thing is, is probably it wasn't dark yet. You could still see outside. I'm cooking dinner, cooking hamburgers, and I could hear something rustling around down below us. Oh, because you, you, you know, could. I think it was May, and there was like you know leaves, real thick leaves everywhere. And you can hear clearly something rustling around. And so I walk over to the edge, and I see an armadillo down there rustling around. There's no way that you could be down there undetected. None. And you'd be stupid to be down there anyways, you know, um, in the pitch black on a side of a ravine, you know. Um, and the next morning, it, it, there's, there's a funnier part of the story I'm fixing to tell you. So we're all freaked out that night. We walk my mother-in-law back down to the camper. My father-in-law's dead asleep. Um, Because we're checking on everybody to make sure it wasn't one of us jacking with us or something, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. (laughs) Anyways, but the fact that Pam got hit and it cut her kind of freaked us out, you know. Like, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny anymore, you know. Somebody was pelting us with rocks. Something was pelting us with rocks, and it... But I will tell you this, as intense as it got for just a short period of time, I don't know how one person could have been throwing that many rocks in anyways. You know, they were coming in, man. Um, And so we get everybody calmed down and everything. And then, you know, of course, the guys and a couple of the wives, Pam, and then we're still sitting out there and we're just kind of sitting around the fire, kind of. Not freaking out, but, you know, like, man, this just doesn't make sense. And, you know, of course, I know what I'm thinking in the back of my head. And so we get on, it's just trying to get everybody on the on the level, like, you know, hey, did we all really just experience this? This is just crazy. So, anyways, long story short, we end up going to bed that night. Nothing else happened. Nothing else happened. Uh, the next morning, I get up early. Um, it's about 7. I go out, start cooking breakfast. Uh, comes over because he's right directly across from us. He comes over. Me and him are standing out there talking. I said, man, I know, in my mind, I know that there's only one thing that could have happened to us last night. And he goes, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> you know? Oh, we did. And we're... And we're talking about it. Well, about that time, the park host on his little golf cart starts coming by. And I I had told that night after it happened that we were talking. I said, I'm going to stop. If I see that park host in the morning, I'm going to stop him and and talk to him about this. And so I do. I stop him right in front of our um, campground, the camp area, and I say, hey, uh, we had something happen to us last night. He says, all right, well, what happened? So I tell him. And he says, 
this is his exact words. Well, I'm very sorry that that happened to you. And I'm thinking, well, that's kind of an odd response, you know. That's all he said? That's all he said. There's nothing else. And I'm standing there waiting for him to say something else. And I said, well, well, let me ask you this. Has anybody else ever told you about anything like that happening out here? And he says again, sir, I'm, I'm really sorry that this happened to you. Same response. <laughs> And I turned to Joe, and I look at Joe, and Joe's just smiling at me like, uh -huh. okay, you know. That right there tells you. Yes, it did. Yeah. It did. And yeah. it told me I might as well shut up because this is, the, this is the only response I'm getting. He's telling me everything I need to know right now. Without saying it. Yep, absolutely. That's, that's the, that's the uh, M.O. right there. Yep. When someone says... Uh, there's a couple responses that you'll get, and we've got the same response from some game rangers, and uh, both my brother Bill and myself, two separate game rangers, we asked yeah. them, and tried to beat around the bush a little bit, just make small right. talk, and then we just said, so what, and, and they were very calm prior to this, yep. and very slow in their yep. talk, and you know, how's the weather, it's looking good, the fishing's yep. going to be great this <laughs> You know, in very, very uh, nonchalant conversation. And then when we ask, so is there any Bigfoot in Oklahoma? What do you think about that? <laughs> we ha had an immediate response, which tells us the answer is, nope, they don't exist. Yeah, well, I never went there with him because I knew, uh, you know, by those two responses, I knew, I knew, I already knew. Um, yes. you know, yes. and, 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 and when I, the second time I said, well, I am too. Um, he, and he, and he says, well, I hope that this won't deter you from coming back to our park. And I said, no, it won't. He goes, I said, I just thought it was very odd and figured I would, you know, ask you if, if anybody else had had any experiences like this. And he says to me, well, about the only thing that we could do is call the park ranger up here. If you want me to do that, I can, but I'm very sorry that this happened to you. And that was the end of the conversation. Yeah, instead of uh, saying something like, did you see who it was? Or, I am so sorry. When yeah. did this yep. happen? What time was this? Yep. And, you know, what a normal he asked average... no questions. Uh -huh. None. Yeah. Other than if I wanted him to get a park ranger, he could. But, yeah. but, and I told him, I said, well, I, don't, I mean, I don't think there's any reason to get a park ranger, you know. And that's now, like I said, that's when he said again, you know, the last time, well, I'm, I'm very sorry that this happened to you. And I just turned it. We started walking off because there was, you know, it, that was all he was going to say. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same response. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, so a couple questions that I have. Um, what um, so what was the size of these? Uh, rocks or pebbles that were being thrown? They were, for lack of another term, I would say the size of a, between a small marble and a large marble. And were they like smooth or just your average rock? You know what? Here's the weird thing is they use out there for these pads like this crushed granite. Okay? And... I never the one that the one that hit we had, and it was a piece of crushed granite. It's, but I will tell you this: the fire was behind them. And see, you know, at first I'm thinking, well, I wonder if the because I've seen bricks pop and throw shrapnel before, and I, you know, at first I thought that that's what had happened. Although we never heard any popping or of any sort, but I thought that's what had happened. She had gotten hit with a piece of shrapnel from something popping out of the fire but her back was to the fire she was the only thing that was in front of her was just so we you know i eliminated that right away but um, the only one that i really saw because you know it was dark it was just the light of the fire until i turned that floodlight on was the one that hit her in the eye and it was a piece of you know pretty good chunk of piece of crushed granite so it was the very crush of granite that's in your camp area well it seemed to be yes yeah 
If that's the is one there, that actually hit her. Are there any trees close by? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that are big trees, like in the campground, that are open, uh-huh. that you pull your camper underneath and everything? Yes. Yes. Well, I just say, um, I, I say that because there's no way a, a rock is going to be like a boomerang. And, oh, no, no, no. And, and no, come no. around, you know, if her back is to the fire. Well, and, and, and like I said. But I'm just thinking trees, the we possibility. We heard them coming through the, the foliage of the bushes and trees coming in at us. So I, we knew exactly where it was coming from, uh, uh. you know, after it started up. But it seemed to be, you know, she got hit with the one, and then it seemed to be like a 10 or 15 second pause. And then we just started getting pelted. Well, then, I, I, I just I just kind of went there just real quick. If there was trees, these things, in, and again, I'm this is a hypothetical, these right. things climb trees very, very well. Yes. Yeah. And uh, people could say, well, there's people around. We would have surely seen this or that. Yeah. Well, well like I said, there's a couple of big trees that were you know, 20 or 30 yards out. Okay. But you could see, you know, if we were looking straight out from the pad, we're looking, you know, 20 or 30 feet up in the tree. Okay. But, of course, at night, you're not going to see up in the tree. All I, When I turned that light on, all I saw was a wall of foliage, basically. And then I really couldn't see anything past that because that's what was lit up. So you say... Well, this... I have no idea, you know... Right, They're, rock throwing tends to be a just like if you were throwing rocks uh, at someone. I don't want you here. Right, right. It, right. It, basically, you're you're annoying me. I don't want you here. Or you're too close. It, it, well, I I almost have a I I have another theory. Yeah, go ahead. You, you might think I'm crazy, man, but uh, no. here's the here's the thing. The first day that we got there, me and Joe were standing on my pad. We were setting up the stuff because I, when we do these groups, I always do all the cooking. We're kind of setting up our cook area there on that pad. Sure. And I told Joe out loud, man, if Bigfoot exists, this is where he'd be because look at this place. You... And I've heard... You know, since then, man, I've, you know, done a lot of research and looked at this. You know, the Indians will tell you, man, the Native Americans will tell you, if you talk about them, they're going to show up. Yeah, that's why they don't discuss that. (laughs) And I don't know that that's not what happened to us, man. No, I don't think it's crazy at all. I uh, I, I think that there's a lot we don't know. Oh yeah, I think that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no one's really an expert regarding yeah. the all of the habits. Let's just say this: they do not do anything, and I mean anything without purpose. There is right. purpose in everything that they do, how they move, vocalization, sounds, branch breaking, rock throwing, yeah. everything. There is purpose. And we think that these things are just a bunch of dumb animals next to, say, a deer or... No. They're very no. well aware. They're masters of their environment. Yeah. They're masters yep. of camouflage. And if they're rattling your trailer or throwing rocks at you, there's a reason why they're doing it. Um, yeah. Did you happen to have any generators going that night or anything like that? No. No, no it was very quiet. I said everything was... was... It was very quiet other than the radio that we were playing. And it was very quiet because, you know, you don't want to disturb the people around you or anything. Right. We were laughing and, you know, talking and just normal campground, you know, around the fire stuff. And what time of the year did this happen? I think it was May. We were thinking we were there May 5, 6, and 7. Of this past year? Mm -hmm. Had you been there before? We had been there before, like, two years previously. Okay. 
had it gotten really thick compared? Were you in the same campground well, area? Well, see, the first time we were ever out there, I think it was two two years prior, it's when the locusts were really, really bad up there, and they had eaten all of the foliage off of everything. There, I mean, it was just like a barren landscape the first time we were there. And so it was a completely different park this time because everything was green and, you know, thick. What is your... What's your background when it comes to your belief prior to this incident about cryptids, Bigfoot, um, Dogman? Oh. What was your... Where were you at with this? Well, let's get into that because I had an experience when I was younger. Well, I grew up in Texas. I don't know if you know where that's at. I but think I do. South of um, runs through there, a place called Creek. And there's a, uh, it's a uh, bend is right there. And that bend is a, there's a bunch of cliffs along there. And when I was um, 12, 13, my dad had just got into rappelling and rock climbing and we were down there one time and I had an experience. I had a, I had a bad habit of wandering away from everybody and just going out scouting around and I had an experience then. Um, and that's kind of, you know, I really didn't know what it was at the time, but years later, I know exactly what it was, you know. Okay. <laughs> I just saw the back of something. I was up on top of the ledge looking down into, um, down towards the bottom of the cliffs. It was kind of a, uh, a hollow, you know, where the cliff makes a sharp turn. And I heard something below me, um, like rocks rolling around, and I saw something crouch down. So just saw the back of it, um, and I saw the arms and the hands actually rolling the rocks around. <clears throat> um, wow! And I got out of there, and that was my that was the first thing I ever. And I and I, you know, ran all the way back in a panic to where my family was, and I trying to tell my dad and all he would tell me is you shouldn't have wandered off <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> very typical but then i find out um later that my dad had an experience in the same area oh. where he never saw anything but he had something um actually chase him with heavy footfall and heavy breathing and uh stuff behind him and when he turned around there was nothing there but he didn't tell me that until I was in my 20s. Oh, wow. And we were talking about <clears throat> that experience that I had. And how old, were you, <laughs> how old were you at the time when you saw this? 12 13. How far down below was it? Um, probably um, I would say I was, you know, 50 feet above it. But at an angle, I was probably, I don't know, at a maximum 100, 120 feet away from it. Up above it, though, and like I said, all I saw was its back. And it was the, the, the hair was the color of, the way I, the only way I can describe it is the color of a, uh, a coyote pelt. Oh, with, like a like a yellowish calico. Well, well, no, it was it was um, like a grayish brownish with some black in it. You know, you know, like the back of a like the back of a coyote. So, like it wasn't one color. Okay, but it was all mixed together, like it has, like it was. Uh, you know, you hear the reports of the older ones there, they're a silver or a gray. Right. True, true. And that's, you know, from my recollection, recollection, being a kid in a panic and everything, I saw the back of what the color of a coyote's pelt. Like maybe it was turning colors or something. Oh, okay. Did you see the hands? I did. I did see the hands. I saw... Fingers. You did see fingers. Dark, dark fingers. And 
I saw arms, but I never saw legs because it was completely crouched down. How big was this backside? <laughs> big, like, um, I honestly, you know, at first I just paused because I didn't know what I was looking at. And then I saw the, the arm come around and roll the rock over. And that's what drew my attention to it because I'd heard like rocks rolling around. Um, and like I said, I, I, I never saw legs. Now, when I turned to, to, to take off, I could have swore I saw it starting to stand up, but I never, I never saw legs, feet, nothing. I just saw one hand, you know, like both elbows out to the sides of the body. And it was big, man. I mean, big, you know, crouched down. And the head, there was, it was like the shoulders just went, you know, typical right into head. There was really no neck. Right. What, what, uh, what was it doing with the rocks? Could you tell? It was just rolling them like it was just rolling them over. Like it was, you know, looking back, like it was looking some, looking for something under the rocks. Oh, I see. And uh, this was uh, what time of the day, maybe? Um, like mid-morning. We would go out there early in the morning. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure it was in fall when this happened. But, you know, you're talking, I'm fixing to be 45, man, so we're talking years ago. Sure. And that area is, has changed a lot. Oh, I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. I actually reported this to the... Um, there's actually a report on it um, to the uh, Texas Bigfoot Research Organization or whatever. Oh, TBRC? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I think... It's on their site. What do they call that? The Texas Bigfoot Research Conservancy? Yeah, I think so. Interesting. So... Now you can go, you can read it. It's on there. I will. I definitely <laughs> will. It's on the Brazos River. Uh, in Johnson County. So you said you had another incident, or uh, did I hear wrong? No, my dad had a, had a, had an experience um, in the same general area as, as I had mine. Yeah. But he never saw anything when he turned around. There was nothing there. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was in the same. Like I said, it was probably one or two miles from where we were rock climbing that day. And it was when he was uh, in his early 20s, so I would have been a baby. Um, a friend of his had a motorcycle stolen, and some other friends told him, hey, well, I know where your motorcycle is. They, this guy's got it out in his barn on his parents' land or whatever out there. And so they were going to, in the middle of the night, go see if it was in the barn. And he dropped my dad off on the gravel road. And my dad climbed, you know, went over the barbed wire fence and got almost to the barn beside a uh, tank. And had, he had a walkie-talkie so he could talk to the guy in the truck. And he said he heard something um, and then heard the ducks fly off from the pond next to him. And so he just got this real easy feeling and started walking back across the pasture to the uh to the fence and then he said he could hear footsteps behind him and they got harder and so he kind of stopped and crouched down and then he could just hear boom boom and then he could hear you know oh, wow. and uh he stands up and takes off running and when he took off running the footsteps behind him got louder and he could hear the breathing he said it was like it was right down his throat like on the back of his neck. And he said, right when he got to the fence, you know, he was screaming on the walkie talkie for that guy to come pick him up. He said, man, when I got to the fence, I spun around because it was on me and there was nothing there. <laughs> Whoa. Nothing. That, that would be enough to have some, um, you have to clean his <laughs> shorts later. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, you know, my mom will tell you um, the story of when he came home that night um, that he was just uh, absolutely panicked, freaked out. You know. Well, there, there, 
their lung capacity is so massive compared to ours yeah. that I'm sure that they can project a volume and they can be yeah. 15 yards away but feel it sounds like they're two feet. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's very possible, very possible. I'm skipping around here. Yeah. But okay. uh, your, your buddy that... Uh, after you spoke to that park attendant and you told him and you and your buddy after the second time you kind of looked at each other yeah. what did uh, what's his feeling about uh, your theory and his theory just out of curiosity well you know he didn't have a theory before he had never had any experiences or anything and um i'll tell you who's the the biggest the, the funniest thing in this whole deal is my wife because She's heard me talk about it, and my son, my son is 13 now, and you know, we watch the the Bigfoot shows and this and that, and it's always been this joke, and even to the point where, you know, last November, we went to uh, up in the mountains of, uh, Oak, of uh, New Mexico and stayed for a week in a cabin with some other friends of ours, and you know, we would go out on the porch at night and hoop and holler and, you know, the whole Bigfoot thing, just just playing around. She's always made fun of us and thought it was this this funny thing, and it really kind of pisses her off that something has happened to her now that there is absolutely no explanation for. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to pick at her, you know, like here you are, you've been the big skeptic and always thought we were crazy, and you know, Look and here has something's happened to you now and. There's no explanation for it. She just, you know. <laughs> does she ever? Does she ever talk about it? Uh, she don't like to talk about it, to tell you the truth. But yeah, we we had a bunch of people over for the fight last night, and we're here, and uh, we were, you know, we talked about it a little bit because, I mean, we still talk about it. It was it was, cra it was an absolutely crazy thing to happen, you know. Um. And she was just last night again, you know, like, I just wish there was a better explanation for it, but there's just not. <laughs> well, that's the thing. These things are very real, and that's the She does not want to believe, man. Well, and you know what? Here's the thing. I don't blame her. I, <laughs> you know, the, the logical side says yeah. we should, this these things should uh, all be known. Uh, yeah. but some people, you could be looking at it and they'll still deny it. Yeah. And, and so that's, yeah. I've got some family like that. You could, yeah. they could be standing in front of them and it could touch them and they're still going to deny it. And, uh, right. I, I respect those people. Um, right. I don't blame them at all, but the logical mind says there's, there's even, there still has to be something logical. These things can exist. They're too yeah. big. They're, they're, how are they just roaming around out here uh, willy-nilly? How does this even happen? Uh, someone yeah. should be informing everybody. It, it, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Um, um, that's You know, I heard my grandfather, sometime, somebody had brought up UFOs one time, and my grandfather was sitting there, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, who are we? How naive would, would it be for us to believe that we were the only living, breathing, thinking creatures that God created, you know? Yeah, that's, well, it's, he's right. There's, there's so much of the unknown. You know, that's, there's, there's a couple big debates when you get into this cryptid phenomenon and you start listening to shows. And right. a couple of the big debates are this. There, there's probably enough to fit on one's hand here. But some of the debates right now out there in the shows and amongst the people are there, that are kind of in the know of things, I would say the debates are this. Um, the debates are shoot, don't shoot. Another, yeah. de another debate is uh, created by God, not created by God. Um, and those that say created by God, they'll say they were created by God, but they were fallen angels that became the Nephilim. Right. And so right. people really get bent out of shape on these <laughs> debates and discussions. 
and um, we don't get that bent out of shape. Yeah. They are flesh and blood. The thing of it is, is that you're in their home when you're yeah. in an area like you guys were at. I mean, yeah. they're so familiar with their surroundings. It would be yeah. like someone going into your home and moving your couch <laughs> six inches to the left. You would know it. You, you know, we, since then, and it's, and it's how I found um, you guys, I was on YouTube looking around and, you know, I actually have found a video of, uh, I, can't, I don't know who it was now, but somebody had went out, out to the exact same park that we were in to research a um, report of a lady and a daughter that had seen one standing at their campsite looking at them. In the same park. And they said, and the, the, the guy that was doing it, I don't remember who it was. I don't remember. It's been a while, but um, had actually spoke to the park ranger or park host um, about the incident in the same campground. And the statement was probably, I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry this happened to you. Sorry this happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> Very sorry this happened to you. Exactly. I hope it doesn't keep you from coming back to our park. Exactly. You guys <laughs> slept oh well. Uh, slept okay, didn't you? <laughs> oh god. So there's been. I, I know that there's been one other. You know, uh, thing happened in that in that same park because I watched the video of. You know. Right. I mean, you said it best earlier without going into detail, but it's like this. When you said you first went to the campsite, this would be a really great place yeah. for a Bigfoot. Well, here's the yep. thing. Any place, and now I'm going to throw in a kink here as soon as I say this here, but typically any place where there's very little people traffic, there is water relatively close by, Yeah. there typically is cover, like in the yeah. sense of foliage, green cover, something that's dense, um, and there's where there's game. This time of the year, there's uh, most of the uh, berries have been in season. They've fallen. Uh, some of the uh, persimmons, uh, it's it's coming in here in the fall, but uh, you know things are going to change here. It's coming up deer season in October. Yeah, but. Yep. Um, so, you know, they, they use the surroundings, and any place where you have those surroundings, you're going to have an ideal spot for a cryptid to be, a uh, dogman yep. or Bigfoot. Now, You the, know, I the, never knew anything about the dogman deal until I started watching y'all's, y'all's shows on YouTube. I never knew anything, I never knew anything about a dogman. We did. Um, you so know, I, I find that very interesting, you know, that there would be two cryptids. Oh, there's um, there's more. A lot of times in the same areas, it's kind of weird. There's more than that out there. <laughs> sure, there is. You no, know, there really is. <laughs> there, there is. Those are the two primarily we focus on on the yeah. show. But I, um, the little people and the well, uh, yeah, all of that stuff. I know it sounds when you when you hear these things, the logical mind. I mean, I'm in the healthcare field. I use science. Um, yeah. things that you can measure. Right, radiographs yeah. and everything that I have to read on a daily basis, and the logical mind says, "This is what this is. This is what that is. This is what right. you don't have. This is what you do have. This is how I can help." So the logical mind, from a scientific point, is very cut and dry. It's like math: right. two and two will always be four. So it's very cut and dry. This doesn't follow that, and this is why yeah. this you you just want to shake your head. You're going. Okay, this this person's out there. They're loony, um, yeah. and but I want to tell you, there's more out there than just the dog man and the Sasquatch. I've spent um, a lot of time in the woods. I'm an avid hunter. Uh, my son and my daughter both hunt with me. Um, I've hunted all my life, and I've been out in the woods in trees and and everything, and I've just. You know, I've had a couple of weird experiences, but I was always able to, um, other than what I saw when I was, you know, when I was a kid, I've always been able to explain what it was. You know, one time I could have swore I had, you know, 
something in the tree with me when I climbed up there to bow hunt that was fixing to kill me. And um, when it come light, I was in the tree with a flock of turkeys, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've always been able to explain it away. Um, but, and I always said, you know, if I was if I was ever to pull into my deer lease and see something standing there in front of me, that I'd never go back down there. But I don't know that I feel the same way now. You know, sure, sure. I just don't, and I don't. You know, there's, there's, they're, they're there. You know, I'm convinced. Yeah, the, and it took, it really took this experience up here in Oklahoma to push me over that edge that I'm convinced that it's that it's real. You know, what I, I'm, I'm a Christian man, and I went to church all my life and I, I have a lot of beliefs and you know I'm, I I think that spiritually um, if you're right with uh, with God then you're protected from a lot of things absolutely spiritually absolutely. you know um, and and I've always said I'm, I'm never gonna see something you know and I always I always counted my experience when I was a kid as well we know that that evil demons and everything prey on weak, weak minded and especially kids because they don't have the maturity to know, you know, their, their faith and everything else. But my mind has been changed by this experience up there. I, mean, I know what it was. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, and you know, and, that, and that's a, a hard line. And I think that's probably where my wife struggles with it too. You know, um, it, there's a fine line there between you know uh, demonic spirits and and everything, and then the flesh and blood. And how can it be both? And how could something be both? Or is it? You know, does that make any sense? Yeah, I, I mean, this again <laughs> that gets into even a branch of the debate I was talking about earlier regarding. Uh, these things, are they coming in and out of portals? And I'm going to say, in my opinion, in our opinion, it being our, the Cryptid Brothers, I'm going to say we, we don't do the... I'm not saying there's interdimensional. I'm well aware. I've had read plenty uh, on interdimensional. Is it possible? Third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension? Sure. On a physics yeah. and quantum physics level, sure there is. But I personally don't believe... As smart as these things are, they're coming in and out of portals and everything. I just don't buy yeah. that. The thing that it is is that when you're a Christian, which we are, and yeah. we believe that having the power of the Lord that allows us to go out and that's yep. it protects us. And, that's right. And and I tell you what, we wouldn't do what we're doing by not being Christian. We have to. Right. I mean, we go right. out and um we we have uh, we have prayer and we yep. uh bless everything awesome. that we go out because of that it gives us uh we're not going to be it's not going to be like crazy horse where he thought he was invisible but right. i'm going to say that uh why not um it's very well known uh the power of the holy spirit and uh the lord is is huge yeah. And you're coming up against something you don't quite understand. And right. so I believe it's, it's um, again, it's a debate on demons, not the demons. I'm, I can't answer it for certain. I'm not going to say I'm the, ex <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say I'm the expert and say it's not. I'm just going to say, why not go ahead and have a yeah. little extra help from the Lord and pray about it yep. and right. ask for blessings prior to going out for safety, for courage, for strength, for understanding, for knowing and uh, for right. everyone. And so that's a great point. I, I wish yep. I could be forthright and just say definitively, this is what it is. Of course, I have, <laughs> I know I'm going to get yeah. a million comments on this, you know, for, you know, yeah. when, when people talk about that, because everybody, you know, wants to have the answer. I just got back. Well, from... I think that, I think that there's a lot of, uh, here's the thing, man, when you, when you talk about, uh, religious beliefs and all of that, a lot of people, number one, don't realize that Christianity in itself has been uh, made overcomplicated. It's very simple. 
you know, Christianity Agreed. is very simple. It's, it Agreed. is, Agreed. you know, um, you accept the Lord as your Savior, you're saved. It is that simple. And so a lot of people don't know that, that in doing so, you do have a lot of protection. Um, and they don't have, they don't know, especially they don't know how to channel that, you know, yes. channel that protection. Yes. And, I, and then I think that's where a lot of confusion comes in for, for some people. I think they do. I think my, they think that my being a Christian, that it somehow puts a kink in their belief in saying these Bigfoot exist or these dog right. men exist or other types of creatures, the little people or these other types of uh, beings, I don't even know what to call them, uh, these rakes, um, exist. That that right. that puts a kink in their faith of Christianity when actually, in my opinion, it strengthens it. Oh yeah, it, it strengthens it. Um, there, there's been a lot of a lot of, a lot of a lot of stuff covered up by the government just so uh, the truth ain't out there. Right. Everybody they want us to live in this nice uh, and you know the best analogy I can say simply in the movie I think can people that have seen the movie know what I where I'm going with this. It's kind of like the Matrix. You want everything to be just normal. And, you know, you get a job, you have your family, you work hard, you go on vacation, you have some outings, you go fishing, you go hunting, and that's life. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. but there's a whole nother arena of things behind the scenes that agencies, which we don't know what they're called, they, they go by different names, I'm sure, that have yeah. existed for a long time in protection. And when I say that, I use that word loosely in protection, in letting us know, that's the protection, in letting yeah. us know and reveal exactly what exists out there. But the people that are in the woods the most, which are hunters, campers, hikers, fishermen, outdoorsmen, re people who repel, people that are who are uh, arrowhead collectors, people that are out and about, they see these things in their environment, which they're going to be in... Um, earlier I was saying put a kink in things, you know, when I say, you know, lots of woods, uh, very little people traffic, water, game, and yep. different types of uh, edible plants. But here's the thing, too, in Oklahoma especially, and it's no different than in many other states, there's plenty of these creatures roaming at night across the plains and wheat fields and peanut fields and potato fields of America. Trust yep. me on that. Um, they're they're out there. There's plenty. Uh, they don't have to have mountains and big pine trees. It, when it comes nighttime, these cryptids are roaming the wheat fields right yep. out in the open. And uh, you would think, well, that's silly. That they've got to be in the uh, Pacific Northwest. They got to be in a bunch of cover. You have to think these things are so massive. Their stride gait is probably two and a half times ours. They can cover yeah. a lot of miles in a given night. Yep. And, and they can cross a, cross a lot of ground quickly. And That's it. <laughs> they can cover a lot of ground quickly and be back to their, uh, um, or their home base before sunup. And so they can get to point A to point B, uh, C and D and E, and get back home before right. sunup. So, uh, you know, they're like anything else. You know, if there's a quicker way to get there, they're going to do it. But if they can, <laughs> right. but if they want to go through thick briary uh, cover, they'll do that just as easy, and it won't stop them a bit. You and right. I, it would have a hard time, but. I don't know. Christianity to me makes allows things to make sense rather than throw a kink in things. That's just our belief, and we and, and it is very simple. You ask the right. Lord Jesus in your heart, there That's you right. go. That's it. It's very simple. Yeah. And I don't, you know, some people say, well, it did not say Sasquatch or Bigfoot or Yeti or uh, in the Bible. Therefore, they just it didn't talk about it. Well. There are giants, there are Nephilim yep. that they talked about. So is 
are, are they speaking of that? I, I don't know. Right. But I know they're here on this earth that God created. And I, I know that, uh, um, you know, we always try to discover the purpose of these creatures being uh, out there. I'm not sure what their purpose is yet. I know what Dave is always saying. They don't serve a purpose. You know, <laughs> his, his point is they don't serve a purpose. And let's Everything take it, serves some sort of a purpose. Yeah, they, you know, what's the purpose? Now, it depends who you talk to. If you talk to the Native Americans, the First Nation the people, uh, then they're protectors. Uh, right. And uh, depending on which tribe you talk to. So, yeah, the, was it on one of y'all's shows that they were talking about uh, the Indians, the, the Native Americans would get the Sasquatch to war with the dogmen? We didn't talk about that. It might have alluded to something like that, but I, that may have been another show. Um, uh, you know, or, would, or they would, or somehow they would get them to, you know, if they were having trouble with the with the dogmen to to get them to go take care of it or something. I can't remember exactly the details of it. Um, but I'm not. I don't think I that was that one was... of ours yet. Um, I I would say that there have been some encounters where people have seen these things uh, interacting at a distance. Um, and not necessarily chummy, but uh, where um, we have one yet to be posted yet. I've got to publish it, but I had a um, uh, one of our guys that's contacted us before. His grandchild got up and they were camping with his grandparents and they got up early in the morning and he went to take a whiz and he got up about two, stood outside the tent, and when he did, he saw three figures and the moon was out he saw three figures really tall standing fairly close to him about 15 yards away and they had like dog ears and dog faces and uh he's standing there and all of a sudden another figure comes in and uh chases these three dog figures off and it had a flat face, and it had no neck, and he describes it as being a Sasquatch. So huh. uh, we, we don't understand the relationship that they have. Uh, we know that they're a little offset to each other. They're, yeah. they're not necessarily chummy. Um, they somehow, um, they're well aware of each other. We just don't understand the full relationship that right. they have with each other yet. Um, we, like I said, they, people have seen them together, but usually it's where they're still standoffish just a little bit. Right. So well, I'll tell you, we, we plan on going back up there. Um, I don't plan on going back up there to poke the bear though. Um, we just want to go back up there and, you know, it, it's a really neat park and there's a lot to do around there in the sulfur area. Um, we, you know, but the whole group kind of has talked and like, we all want to go back. <laughs> it, it wasn't a, a, a big negative experience or anything. I thought it was pretty cool to tell you the truth. Um, my wife may tell you something different, you know, um, but she wants to go back up there as well. So, Close. All, right, man. all right, man, we'll take care. And uh, if anything happens or whatever, just give me a holler. I'm here. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. Bye.